Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Magic Hour podcast. I'm your host, Shereen Campbell, and I'm the founder of My Little Magic Shop. One day, I lit a candle and asked for clarity in my professional and life path. Soon after, I was gifted with the message that I'm here to help others go through exactly what I was going through then. And just like that, My Little Magic Shop and the Magic Hour podcast was born. Our guest today is energy healer, holistic therapist, author, and heart healer, Estelle Bigham. Welcome, Estelle. I'm so, so excited to have you as a guest. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Shireen. Very excited to be in the, on the magic hour. It's magical yes. times. Yes, magical times for a magical year. <laughs> yeah, we need okay. that. So a little birdie told me you started meditating at six years old. Whoa, how did that happen? Yeah, I did. I started meditating at six years old. I learned Transcendental Meditation, TM. Mm -hmm. And I learned that, I I learned a, a walking mantra first because they don't give children a seated mantra so I learned the 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 walking mantra and then when I was like eight or nine I was given a a proper mantra seated and and that was that was kind of it for me and I've been meditating ever since so I grew up in a place called Hackney in London which now is super cool it's kind of you know the East End has had a real sort of renaissance but when I grew up it was like it was a it was probably the most deprived um borough like the most deprived area in the UK and um we you know used to go to this meditation center um it was really high vibrational energy it held a lot of energy there and um my mom was a meditator she'd been a meditator since sort of the 60s she'd learned TM in the 60s so that was kind of something that I think you know uh, one of the things that's so powerful about meditation is is how it can, wherever you are, and wh- wh- whatever's happening in your environment, it can um, really sort of keep you anchored mm-hmm. and keep you connected. Yeah. And and that's, you know, it's, it was a gift. Oh, I love that. Okay, so you brought up a couple of things that I actually had never heard about before. So tell me just very quickly a little bit about a seated meditation versus a walking meditation, a mantra, sorry, a seated mantra versus a walking mantra. I've never heard of either of these terms before. Okay, so in with TM, um, you know, they believe that children can't really hold a seated, you know, that just sitting in one place, like we're a little bit kind of movie aroundy and it's, you know, like you can't really get children to sit down. And so they work with that energy mm-hmm. and, you know, we can be in meditative state when we are walking. And I always say to people that don't know how to meditate or really, or, or struggle with it. And it's become this kind of like slightly, you know, what is this meditation thing? It's like something out there. And actually, you can we can be a meditative state doing the gardening. We can be a meditative state walking, running, um, you know, swimming. All of these things um, are meditative, and it's about the you know our brain waves sort of change. Basically, they change from different you know from from beta to alpha. They kind of have a completely different transformation. But so in TM, they're like little kids want to run around. They want to throw things. So, so let's work with that energy. And when they're ready to just still themselves a little bit more, then they can sit with a seated mantra. Of course, you know, any time meditation technique, it only takes like 10 minutes a day. You're meant to do it 10 minutes a day, twice a day. It's not a really long thing. Um, but for a child, 10 minutes can be super long. So how they used to work it was that you would have to just be still in meditative state practicing and that's really what meditation is it's about practicing so you practice and you'd stay in that place you'd stay in that state for seven minutes and then eight minutes and then 10 minutes right up until so when you got to the age of 10 then you were like in the adult kind of timing with it Oh, I love that. And just for our listeners that aren't as familiar with transcendental meditation, can you just give like a brief like overview as to what it is in comparison to other types of meditation? 
Well, TM came out of the Himalayas. It came out of India, right? So kind of most of the meditations that we know today, sort of yogic meditation, um, a lot of, all of that's come from India. So TM came from the Himalayas. It was um, developed by someone called Guru Maharaji, uh, who was, um, who was the, he was the kind of guru. And the Beatles went to see him in Rishikesh, which is the mouth of the Ganges in the 60s. Oprah Winfrey learned TM and she taught like everyone in the whole building um, in Chicago, learned, basically practices TM. Um, there's inc an incredible foundation called the Bob, uh, the, the David Lynch Foundation. So the director, David Lynch, started a foundation that is run by someone called Bob Roth, who they take meditation TM in America into schools, um, inner city schools and prisons. And that's really about, you know, bringing, raising consciousness and bringing this, it's like a key, like the minute you can meditate, you have power over your mind, over your thoughts. Okay. It's about mastering, becoming more than our thoughts. So then we're not defined by all of the thoughts that can bombard us and especially when those thoughts are negative right so if we're growing up in an environment that isn't so pretty yeah. meditation gives us again it's this way to anchor now again there are different many different forms of meditation now mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. around yeah um and but i think tm is a great one i think it's a it's a brilliant place to start it's a it's just a great it's a great tool it's a great it's a great thing to have especially in these times yeah yeah absolutely and does it have because you mentioned a mantra so is it like a chanting type of meditation is it like just because i i'm not entirely that familiar with it so i just love to learn like is it chanting is it you know like visualizing colors is it focusing on your breath like what what in what's the basis so, for it yeah so the mantra is a little is a piece of sanskrit for a divine part of a divine um you know the divine language um mm. that that originates in india and it kind of that something will mean it's a it's a sort of a, a, a divine word so and really mantra so when we say om om is a, is, a, is a sanskrit word too and that, that's obviously the original vibration it's the original word mm. and when we say om it, it's it's all these mantras are all all it is is a way to just bring you into a place where thought we start to thought stops um it starts to lose power over a grip over our consciousness mm -hmm. right and that's all it is so meditative state is just this you know this repeat and often obviously we can repeat very di all sorts of different mantras so when people are doing my meditations we might one one week we may do uh, a Hindu a Hindu mantra another week you know um, it's it's kind of more Tibetan more Buddhist but really it's just holy you know it's sacred it's just these words that re reverberate they have a vibration a sacred vibration and all we need to do is just repeat them and energy starts to change so it's like it starts to impact ourselves in a different way right and that's it's just giving ourselves a chance an opportunity to for our consciousness to to shift yeah and that's what a mantra does it it basically the thoughts and the stuff and the the lifetime you know it it starts to lose a grip on on us yeah I'm not good enough. Who am I? You know, like, why am I trying to do this? That's not going to work. I, I'm not, you know, who am I to do this or that? I don't love myself. I don't, you know, what do I look like? I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too... And it's actually the, the mantra takes us into a, a place where there is no thought. It's a sort of, there's a quiet and that's, that's the silence. And that's when we start to be in relationship with the silence. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so beautiful. Wow. What a powerful thing. For a six-year-old to start, you know, like, I feel like everybody should start meditating at six. Like, imagine, like, how different the world would be. So, yeah, super the, world would be, the world would be, I mean, I think this is why it's an amazing, it's actually really amazing what the, the David Lynch Foundation are doing, because they're, they're taking, it's their mission to take meditation into schools so worldwide, internationally. Mm -hmm. um, it would be a very different, it would be a very different ball game. 
Yeah, yeah. But the fortunate thing is that there are more people like you that are coming into the world where they're learning so much younger. So from my uh, research, I realized that you are a fourth generational healer. You come from this beautiful lineage of, of healers. And, and uh, clearly that that's obviously why you started meditating at such a young age. But I would just love to learn more about this. Like, so your mom was a meditator. Just tell me about this entire, you know, lineage that you come from. Okay, so um, on my my mother's side, so so my mother was a sort of classic. You know, she was she was a, a an adventurer, a traveler. She was basically a hippie. Mm -hmm. um, she did a lot of traveling in the sixties, but she was on a real uh, soul searching. She was on a path, a real a real journey. Um, and she met my father, who is from Barbados. So my mother's English. My father's from Barbados. She they met. Uh, they were going for an audition for hair. So like, you know, <laughs> my mom was planning to be in the chorus. This is the age of Aquarius. But my dad was going to be in the um, orchestra. And they met and that was that. <laughs> and on my father's side, we have, um, so in Barbados, there's a really powerful um piece of land, actually. It's a plantation. It was a, it's obviously it's a, an ex-plantation and it was it wound up um, being bought by my uncle and my aunt at the time. And it was sort of, they became sort of custodians of this land. But what we've discovered was that our ancestors on both sides were actually on this plantation and, and had lived there as slaves. Um, so it was quite a, quite a powerful story. And the, there were white slaves too, and they were, they were indentured slaves. And the white slaves had, um, left the plantation come back and they bought the plantation from the original original owners and when they came to sell it however many hundreds of years later like 200 years later they would only sell this piece of land to someone who, from black Bayesian who was black Bayesian and so they sold it to my uncle wow. um, and then we found out that this this land was really powerful powerful in our family and the first time that I really had this feeling about the moon was probably about 22 23 years ago and i was sitting in barbados i was sitting on the land the moon was high it rises over the sea and it's it's like really powerful in there it's you know they're kind of old slave huts and it but it's really really powerful um piece of land mm -hmm. and the moon rise the moon rises and i was really i, I got such a massive download about meditating and being in alignment with the moon and you know really using the energy of the moon and starting to bring that into a practice um and that's what i started to do like 22 years ago i started i started holding moon circles when people were like you've got to be a bit crazy and we started we were burying crystals and making prayers for the land and making prayers for you know the the, the animals and the earth and the oceans and manifesting different things each month with the power with the with the energy of, of each different moon but on that side of my family um there we had an aunt who was very psychic a great aunt and then on my mother's my mother's side of the family the, the psychic line goes all the way back it's in the female so so my mother my great grandmother my, my great it skipped a generation so it was my mother my great grandmother and then and then we think also someone before and they were really just psychic you know it's like it's having that gift and i think that everyone has the right to be psychic in their own lives i don't feel like it's you know something that should be too mystif myst mystified like it's like all of these things it's like you have the power so you know everyone has the the power to intuit their own soul wisdom to 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 see the signs to be in relationship with the universe to be their own shaman like to be the shaman in their own lives um some people you know we have we're, we're good at different things right so leonardo da vinci was going to paint the sistine chapel i'm not going to do that some people like you know they can be psychic for other people or they can facilitate other people's healing but ultimately you know when it comes to healing and when it comes to intuitive soul wisdom and intuition it, you are as powerful as anyone else and I think that's that's really important to to remember and that's that's what my work is about is actually just enabling that in everyone yeah oh I that's so beautiful I love that so much so like looking back at your childhood 
you know, and like all this powerful energy and um, just, you know, like all of these um, family members that, you know, were definitely intuitive and psychic and like really open to like things beyond the veil. Would you consider your overall upbringing like very strong or religious in any sense? Or was it more just like a sense of like, just knowing that the universe was, you know, had all these magical things. Like what, what, what's your perspective on it now when you look at it holistically? Well, I had, um, I suppose like, it's interesting. Yeah. So, so God existed for me in everything um, from a very early age. And actually Christ, I had a sort of a, a real, um, a very sort of big, deep relationship with Christ that just came in like that. Um, really nothing to do with anything you know in in my obviously on my father's side the west indians is like sort of strong christian tradition um and it was sort of like again for me it's about what is sacred and it's about the wisdom it's about you know the wisdom of the prophets it's about the wisdom you know it's 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 all interrelated it's all interlinked it's all part of the same when we are working in the light you know and and that's the most important thing for me is about being in the light. So where there is a light that shines, that is kind of, that is energy Mm -hmm. and that is energy to align yourself with. So I suppose it's like, it's not religious. It's, it's kind of, it's that spiritual, it's whatever, you know, it's about connection. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've spent time in many different, in with lots of different, different cultures, I've spent time all over the world being a t- when I was a travel presenter and also my traveling has taken me all over the world. Um, and for me, I'm, you know, it's where people are in heart connection. I mean, that's all that interests me. And when there is that, that, that sacredness, you can feel it, you can feel it in people. Um, so, so it, I wouldn't say it was religious, but it, it's definitely, um, I'm open to all of it. You know, I love going into churches. I love going into mosques. I love going into temples. I, you know, I love going to the mountains. I love going into the trees. I love, you know, I love going to the ocean. Um, It's, it's kind of all of all, everything, everything at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that definitely resonates with me. I'm a big fan of just taking everything from anywhere you know, that feels good and like just bringing it in into my life and appreciating it. So it like definitely resonates with me. So just going back to this moment where, you know, like you're in Barbados, you're on this land, you're, you know, like taking in this download and this beautiful energy from this powerful moon. Like, do you feel like it was that a moment where you knew that you wanted to like share this energy with others? Was it a moment that, you know, really allowed you to, um, think about your own self healing, like, tell me just a little bit, because I, I guess I'm very interested into like, how did you move from, you know, like, understanding and learning so much about meditation and your connection to the world into the healing world and helping others? Well, when I was very young, I could feel so I've always been able to just feel energy Mm-hmm. um in people and you know there's two things that happen so w- often we, when we come into the incarnation we come into the incarnation we land in the lifetime and that lifetime is very specific um to what we're meant where we're meant to heal and what how it's going to shape our our future and our purpose mm-hmm. and i came into the lifetime and um with a lot of resources and also with a lot going on so mm-hmm. It, it was interesting. Um, I could always feel energy and I was also quite hyper, hyper vigilant. So I was, it was a sort of, it was, it was both. So I was a natural born empath. And then it's like, you have to work with that, what that means and, and why we're born as empaths. Like we, some of us are just born, we are born with that, with that knowledge, with that information that, that comes in as the soul wisdom from past lives. If you believe in those, um, just a soul imprint. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, you know, you drop into the lifetime and it's like, if you're around dysfunction, that empathy, you know, you have to, that empathy is beca- can become something else. So you can become like a sponge to what's out there. Um, and my journey really, I, I feel is in the, in the feminine and it was always going to be in the feminine for me. Um, 
and I because I work with the divine feminine it was the first energy that really came well the first energy that came really strongly to me was was were the angels and the angels came to me at, when I was about eight years old eight or nine years old and they used to come and just I would write I'd start writing poetry and they and I, I could feel them in the room I could feel them around and it was just this piece and it was it came at a time when I was it was like there was quite a sense of um fear or I would be quite feel quite lonely and they'd come in and they would be just literally it was just like peace and I'd start to write about angels and I'd start to write about the soul and I'd start to write about these things um and then they sort of they kind of wafted off and then they came back in in like my early 20s really strongly um and then this energy with the divine feminine and so I work a lot with that the feminine wound I work a lot a lot with the mother wound mm -hmm. I work, a lot of people come to see me who have just, you know, there's been a, a, a sort of interruption there. Um, or just the wounding, you know, the wounding and, and of, of the, when we, when we have any type of interruption in the heart energy, mm -hmm. um, we have to go back deep into, we really have to connect into the river of compassion like we have to go deep like we have to get into that underground river that ocean of compassion and find a way to drop into that even when we have no idea what that feels like or what that looks like like it's like I could be speaking as you know an ancient a, a sort of like Swahili or like ancient Aramaic like it's like it doesn't make any sense um and so yeah so my journey into healing for others came through this um, healing in myself mm -hmm. in in relationship to my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and when I knew, I mean, I, I could always feel energy I could and I could I could heal energy. So I could take headaches out of my mom and I could I could feel what people what was going on. But I didn't want to be a healer. In fact, it was the last thing I wanted to do. I was like, I'm running from this <laughs> because I was like, I knew that I, I was just like, I don't want to do it. So I went and did, um, I sort of became a TV presenter. I went and did travel presenting and I became a, t a, a, a journalist, mm -hmm. a music um, journalist and manifested that. I was like, right, I'm going to manifest because I, I understood about the power of manifestation. Mm -hmm. I made a, a really amazing um, cosmic board when I was like, I came back from, I was actually in the States and I was actually in New York and I came back, I was about 24 and I was like, right, I'm, and I sort of came back with nothing really. And I was like, I'm going to be, I want to be a TV presenter. Mm -hmm. I want to be on TV. I want to be writing. And at the time it was a bit of a, a needle in a haystack, but I got the whole, what you can achieve, you what you can conceive, you can achieve. And I went into full manifestation mode. And so that's what then, then happened. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say to people, you know, there are certain things that we have to surrender to and, and our grace, you know, the grace is is in surrendering you know it's like what is such an honor to be of service you know and so that part of me that was kind of in my ego and was a little bit like oh, oh, you know i was just got out of the way of that yeah and i was in la and actually i had just had my son and people started turning up i think i cleared the building this was in la on franklin avenue i'd cleared the building i'd gone round, and there was some kind of there were some sort of spirits in there and we, we moved them out and then after that it was like some smoke signal had gone up into the air <laughs> and people started turning up on the doorstep um and so i just started seeing people interesting and it, yeah and it just happened it just kind of it was uh, and i just i just sort of gave permission yeah okay so just take me back because you did you just mentioned like so many things i have so many questions about you know just just so i want to understand a little bit more about this 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 feminine wound this like this uh and the divine feminine but then also just in regards to your story so it was just like that you're at this place you've manifested what it exactly what it is you want you become this successful tv presenter and then you're kind of at this place you've just given birth and you're like you know what i think it's time for me to work in healing like what like is that is that pretty much how it went down or was there like a huge insight did it come immediately after giving birth um, you know, it was sort, you know, I suppose, um, my, my work, it's like a journey. It's like a, these are just, they're sort of steps on a journey. Yeah. So even when I was, when I was presenting and I, 
I was, t- I sort of, it was, it was such a, it was such a gift because we just go to these really amazing places. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I really connected in with the, my first crystal, mm-hmm. which was in the high up in the Himalayas, um, actually in Pakistan, in this place in the Hunza region where they eat apricots and they stay, they stay alive to they're like 102 and they believe in fairies. And the king of this area would basically they w- w- would bring these huge crystals into his castle like it was like something out of a fairy tale um but it was very magical and and the it was an elestial um which is elestial crystals hold all the power of the akashic records and it was the first crystal that really was was spoke to me um in that re- really powerfully it was like okay and and i was like this was sort of the, the initiation the first initiation and um it's like they everything sort of just follows its course if that makes sense so you know when I'd had my son and people turned up (laughs) I just sort of allowed that I kind of I mean I've got you know I've got my moons in Sagittarius Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Shireen as you know freedom freedom (laughs) Explore, you're just down with whatever <laughs> well, part of me is like yeah like I've always known always from a very early age like this time on the planet is short yeah. and it's such a it's such a breath and it's gone you know it's a, it's a such a sort of precious we have such a, a it's such a precious time mm-hmm. um but I love an adventure and I'm also like, if the adventure, I sort of allow the ad- adventure to unfold. And if the adventure says, right, like it's time. Like, so I'm like, okay, it's time. Let me just, you know, I'm not that fixed. Mm-hmm. I can kind of, I can kind of get out of the way of myself. Yep. Yeah. I love that. Yes. That that's, that's really beautiful. Okay. So circling back to this divine feminine and this, the wound, I've actually never heard too much about this. So you're going to have to like, give me all the knowledge about it. Okay. <laughs> what about the wound about the wound? And yes. The I never heard, like, I've always heard of like the fall and like, you know, like the more, but I always heard about it in the context of all of humanity. Right but never so much about the feminine wound versus like the masculine wound. And like, I've heard of divine femininity, which I think is something that's talked about, but not as much as toxic masculinity. So I'm like trying to like understand all of these different terms. And I feel like since this is something you brought up, it sounds like something you're passionate about. I would love to hear from you about it. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, the reasons I said, you know, when people come to see me, I mean, there are all the myriad of reasons why, you know, what are, what are our wounds? Like, where do these wounds come from? And, you know, our wounds come invariably from, as we know, are, are the, the first relationships that we have on the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, when we, when we land, when we come here, we, we come from a place of, you know, source energy. And when we when we're incarnated, sometimes we're incarnated into families we don't recognise. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know who these people are, <laughs> right? Like this doesn't vibrate with me at all. But you know, wherever we are, it's like if there's any type of interruption in that very that that first experience, that that first emotion, love. You know that if there when there's an interruption in that love energy, you know that affects our hearts Mm -hmm. and it's immediate it's like a kind of you know so even if you're in the womb and mum's feeling ambivalent about having you or frightened or you know and it's like that's the energy those are the chemicals that start to create you Mm -hmm. in in your earth self right and the earth self carries these these you know these these wound this wounding in a cellular place so the mother, the mother experience, you know, the mother experience is um, is a massive one because a lot of people, a lot of us have got uh, mothers who are wounded, right? We're, they're just wounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all perfectly imperfect. And, you know, they're wounded because they've been wounded. You know, they're, wo- they're wounding because they're, they've been wounded by by their mothers and all their fathers. And it's this, it's this intergenerational wound. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Yeah, you know, abandonment, a lot of the issues of abandonment, rejection, the fear of intimacy, the fear of coming into the heart. You know, we start to shut down. Like we're, we're, when we're children, we're so resilient. 
and we can just carry on like we will survive because we are survivors mm -hmm. um but when we get into the to the adult when we, when we mature and we look around and there's what is it that's that's missing and why can we not why can't we get into the heart like you know what's happening with the relationships around us like why don't we love ourselves like what is going on you know um you know there's a point where the spirit says it's time you know it's time you've got to go you've got to go into recovery mm -hmm. it's time to recover yourself it's time to go into the dark places and it's time to to go in and, and find that 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 child mm -hmm. um and the way that we do that is through the heart energy mm. that's oh, i you know it's so funny because this morning um i do i do a 10 minute meditation and i've been doing using calm the app calm recently yeah this morning's meditation was about loving kindness and it was about going into your heart center and I remember in the meditation I'm like what is this supposed to feel like I'm just like I don't know and I like I feel like I'm just like what does this mean and like it really had me thinking and so on my like list of things I wanted to research soon was this what does it mean to step into the heart set heart chakra and also heart center and then i get to talk to you about it so yeah. let's talk a little bit more about that yeah so um so yeah so i mean i see i see people obviously who where there's been you know um interruptions in the masculine too mm -hmm. and it's it's about bringing the sacred back into that toxic experience so toxic mother toxic father bringing that that sa that sacredness back through in you know through the healing again we have to drop through we i for me that the, the heart is the is the it is it, it's basically this is the the portal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is the portal to the soul yes and so when you all right so when you're saying the dropping into the heart and you're kind of it sounds like you're more connecting that with the feminine is it the same thing for the masculine or is it like the masculine's the solar plexus like i i don't know yeah, but. yeah. okay so it's interesting because it's it, it it sort of um it's both it's like the two truths you know it's a dialectical truth mm -hmm. um again when we so when i do the the, the sort of the energy that came in to work with me was um is is divine feminine energy mm -hmm. that is the energy that i i work with um when i'm really my one-to-ones and and on my retreats uh in a big way and the divine feminine faces of the divine divine feminine are green tara kuan yin mother mary isis who's the egyptian goddess um mm -hmm there's someone called Pista Sophia, they're ancient, you know, um, faces of the feminine that run throughout from, from, from the ancient times, run throughout history, throughout religions, throughout cultures. And it's, it's one energy. And that energy is the energy of compassion. Mm -hmm. It's the energy of compassion and love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so on my retreats, I also work with the sacred masculine. And that's kind of why it's it's like a I suppose it's a healing modality. It was a healing modality that I have developed, mm -hmm. and it, it is a, I call it the uh, angelic shamanic. It's an angelic shamanic healing modality, mm -hmm. that because we 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 call in Father Sky, we call in the sacred masculine mm -hmm. with the sacred feminine because the two are inter. It's all part of the same. So we can't do the work one without the other. But mm -hmm. the sacred feminine is so um when you when there's that dropping in through the heart mm -hmm. into the sacred you know the sacred feminine really facilitates that work in a massive way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you imagine these faces of the feminine it's kuan yin mother um green tar in buddhism you know mother mary it's like in christianity it's it's there it's a, a very powerful energy of love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's also part of the whole so it's it's a it's quite a kind of yeah to get your head around it you know it's that kind of like really sort of expanding out into it yes. um and it does begin always for me that's the work is in is in the it goes we have to go in this is the seat of mm -hmm. all of everything um and we are really out of connection mm -hmm. you know when i do my work i i'm 
you know, we are, we, we, it's that thing, Shireen, where you're like, what am I doing right now? Like, what, like what's going on? But when you drop in, it's just, you are free, really. Yeah. Yeah. You're free to meet yourself and, and it's everyone's birthright to drop in Mm -hmm. every single person's birthright to return because it is your return. You know, that's how we return in a very profound way to ourselves. Yeah. And then in terms of like tips for someone who's like, okay, I need to drop into my heart center. Like what would be, you know, I guess one of the, and of course we don't want you to give away all your secrets because I need to sign up for your classes for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like what are some ways that, you know, someone who's just starting out this practice of dropping into their heart can use to get there? Like, is there a mantra? Is there like a meditation? Like what, what's your suggestion? Well, I actually think that um, the Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum mantra is a very, very powerful and very beautiful sacred, you know, a mantra of the sacred feminine. And that's a Tibetan, that's a Buddhist um, mantra. And it's it's, um, the Green Tara Kuan Yin mantra. It's very powerful for the opening of the of the of the heart it works even if you have it in the background mm-hmm. if you did that like five minutes a day like just you know without any judgment you know it's it's really um important to stay stay in the softness of mm-hmm. self you know we love to be like oh even that thing of like well what time is it we'll have it you know it's three minutes or da, da, da. it's like that's not in we're not with it's not in the softness mm-hmm. we just stay really out of judgment really out of judgment and just like i'm just going to repeat this on mani padme hum that's really powerful because it's got the vibration of the thousands of years in it Right. And that's what I mean about a mantra that comes with it, with, with that vibration. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that I think is you know, anyone can do is to spend a few moments with your heart every day mm-hmm. and literally just, you know, create a little space, create like a heart ritual, create a, a heart moment. And heart really loves it when you show up mm-hmm. in a consistent way. Mm-hmm. And it's like you will feel that you know, light the candle and, and, you know, you've just got your heart, your hand on your heart and you just, you're closing your eyes and you're just breathing into heart and just taking a little bit of time, not rushing, just taking a little bit of time, a few breaths, just for heart, just for heart. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, that's so beautiful. And, you know, I think sometimes when we say like these, we use these terms divine masculine divine feminine like sometimes we think of like someone's actual like gender and I think that it's important to say that like men should be stepping into their divine feminine and connecting with that energy as well so like any men out there listening just know that this is not we're not just talking to women about this this is also for you oh I mean 100% you know and this is what I mean and that's what I really want to emphasize and make sure that that's really clear is is the divine feminine is the divine you know they are two you know it's it is that yin and that yang it's like you can't have one without the other and we both we all have the masculine and the feminine within the psyche within the makeup so we balance the masculine and the feminine and in in both in all of us so a lot of a lot of women today lead with the with the toxic with the toxic masculine energy mm-hmm. and they have to return and they have to come you know into their vulnerability how can they access their vulnerability mm-hmm. how is it safe to be truly vulnerable mm-hmm. how can you create that in yourself mm-hmm. that you are not afraid mm-hmm. to to be truly intimate with another human being mm-hmm. you, you know so that is about realigning the the masculine and the feminine within and using the divine fe- energy that exists around us right here right now you know to facilitate our healing to facilitate our expanded consciousness like we bring that in like we use that like that's there it's like of service and and that's of service to humanity so it's absolutely we we can't we, we're not going anywhere without the men and men are not going anywhere without the women, without the girls, without the boys, without, you know, we are, we are humanity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. What a beautiful way to kind of like wrap up, you know, that this conversation, um, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I feel like you gave me a lot to think about, especially in regards to the heart and like taking that time to really like step into and get in touch with that heart center every day. So before I let you go here at the magic hour, we always end an episode with three feed your soul questions. So I really just love to hear more about, you know, how others, um, care for themselves, especially when you're spending so much time pushing out this beautiful knowledge and wisdom into the world. Like, how do you keep your own cup full? So I have three questions for you. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, are there any consistent activities or rituals you personally do on a daily basis um, to maintain a sense of inner peace? Yes. So every day I call in the angels, I call in the angel of the day. I light a candle for the angel of the day. I call in an, uh, the angel of the day and I do a prayer to bring them in and surround me everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I also walk in, I do take a walk every day in nature mm -hmm. in the park, one park or another park. And I, I do that every day to ground and also clear energy, you know, move it through me. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. I like never, I'm like that, that completely makes sense. Especially if you like, live in a city and especially with what's happening this year with so many people being you know like isolated at home so like definitely spending some time out in nature you know once a day could probably do wonders i love oh, that. yeah yeah huge when it comes to self-development what are the books or tools that really offered life-changing discoveries for you oh wow i mean like again i suppose for me it would be um the angel work that I've done, you know, it, it would be all of, it's about the understanding and learning about the angels. So, um, and there are lots of books out there. Uh, one of the books that I've got, which is actually sitting up there, but I can, I remember the author's name. No. Oh, it's, I think it's called, a, a, no, I can't remember her name, but um, there are a lot of books out there and it's basically, I feel like you're guided with, you know, it's like when a, a, a when a, a title jumps out at you, it's like crystals. It's like when they jump out at you, that's the one for you. And when a title jumps out at, at you, you should go for it. But for me, it's like it was really grounding that relationship in sort of the understanding mm -hmm. of what they do and who they are. And, you know, that was that was kind of, um, yeah, that was it was really life changing for me. Oh, I love that. And I, um, I use... Um... Uh, Kyle Gray has a set of like angel cards that I use and so yeah. I think the keepers of the light cards that he has mentioned pretty much all of the um, of the divine feminine um, angels that uh, that you talked about so I think that that's definitely like a really great deck to further connect with that yeah and, that sounds great and then my third and final question is when you were in an emotional rut what are your go-to ways to really bring yourself out of that feeling Hmm. Yeah. I mean, getting out of an emotional rut is, I talk about this all day long. <laughs> like how do, how do you do this? And I just feel like it's, um, sometimes you've just got to nip it in the bud, right? Really take one day at a time mm -hmm. and be really kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. One day at a time, like, and if the next day if you fall off, it's okay. But the third day you know make it the third day and then the third and the fourth and it's like allow that that sort of incremental um climbing out of that rut you know for me it's all about exercise it's like if I can get if I can kind of start to move my body if I can start to kind of do some yoga or you know that really shifts um if I've been in emotional rut, it kind of shifts energy Oh, I love that. Oh, thank you so much, Estelle. Again, this was a magical chat. So can thank you tell? You. Oh, yeah. So can you... No. So can you tell our listeners how they can follow you on your journey and get in touch with you? Yeah. So your listeners, everyone out there, you can find me on Instagram, Estelle, E-S-T-E-L-L-E -E -E, dot Bingham or um, via my website. So EstelleBingham.com. Everything's there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you everyone for tuning into the Magic Hour. We hope you enjoyed listening. Be sure to check out the show notes over at mylittlemagicshop.com for more information on today's guest, Estelle Bigham. We hope to see you again next Sunday. And as always, sending you so much light, 
love, and magic. And remember, without a dream, you can't have a dream come true. So make sure you're out there making your own damn magic. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Magic Hour podcast. If you want to learn more, you can find us on our website, www.mylittlemagicshop.com and follow us on our Instagram at mylittlemagicshop. See you next time.